I'm Natalie. Today I have another what's for dinner video to share with you. Um, I have six dinners in this video and one of them I apologize ahead of time for the footage being kind of dark. Um, we were in the direct path of a hurricane this week and I've told y'all before if you've seen like my prepper videos or my pantry tours that um, we live in an area that we typically get we don't get hurricanes because we're inland, but we do get bad weather off those hurricanes. Well, this time, uh, the eye came directly across the town that we live in. So we did get a hurricane and uh, we are so blessed and so thankful. Uh, we All we had was power outage, um, personally for our home. We I do have a generator. Uh, if you've seen my pantry tours, you know I have several refrigerators and freezers, so a generator is a must so that I don't lose all of that stuff and we were able to get that hooked up and keep everything going. We only went 29 hours without power. There are people, um, we lost, the hurricane was Wednesday, today is Saturday, and there are people in our town that still do not have power. And um, there are people in the neighborhood that I live in that had very significant damage, trees falling on top of their homes, um, really bad stuff, so it could have been a whole lot worse for us than it was. Um, but the footage that I have from one of the dinners that I had cooked in a crock pot, we lost power just as it finished. And so it's kind of dark when I'm showing you the end. But um, other than that, it was fine. And like I said, I'm so grateful that we did not get it any worse. Um, but yeah, so we will just get started. Okay, first up is chicken fingers and home fries. Um, for my chicken strips, I like to soak those in buttermilk all day pretty much while I'm at work and then um, cook them when I get home, but you can soak them for just a few hours. It does really help make them tender. And then I've got my egg and milk mixture, and then for my flour, I just added some Kinder's all-purpose seasoning, but whatever seasoning you like for the breading. And then I do usually dip my tenders in my flour, then my egg wash and back in my flour to give them a little bit more um, of that crispy coating outside. Then I just put them in the frying pan um, and cook them in the skillet, usually on like a medium heat, um, both sides till they're done. And my french fries, I just cut those up and um, put them in the fry daddy and that was our dinner that night. Like I said, nothing special, but I told y'all I would show you what we have each week and so that's what I'm doing. Um, we really like that Friday seasoning that we got at Sam's and that right there, that Kinder's um, Hot Honey Barbecue, it's not hot. Um, but that is my new favorite barbecue sauce. It is so, so good, y'all. You definitely need to try that one. Okay, next up we have Alice Springs Chicken. Um, this one, I just cut my chicken strips in half. Not my chicken strips, my chicken breast in half, like fillet them so they're thinner. And then I always season them on both sides. I just used nature seasoning, but again, you know, you just use whatever seasoning you like. And I just cook those. This night I was making several, so I went ahead and cooked them in my electric skillet because I can cook so many at one time but you do want to cook them all the way through they are going to go in the oven for a little bit but i do always cook these all the way through then for the dressing the honey mustard dressing it is mayonnaise dijon mustard and honey and i just eyeball it at this point i will try to do the best that i can when i do my um, description to give you accurate measurements but i just eyeball what i think I've made it so many times now that that's what I do, and then I just taste it, and if I think it needs more of something, that's what I add. Um, I think that it is best made with the Duke's brand mayonnaise, <laughs> I'll tell you that, uh, but, you know, whatever mayonnaise you like really is fine. Then we're going to bring our chicken back to our casserole dish and put our dressing all over it. I make a good bit of dressing because I like to also have some to put over top of it or to dip it in after it's done. And you also, um, you know, for Alice Springs chicken, you typically would put mushrooms on here as well. You would add now, but I I'm allergic to mushrooms, so I leave them off. Then cheese, you use Colby Jack cheese, but I've made it with any cheese I have on hand and it's fine. You really, it really does not matter. And then um, bacon. So I just cooked some bacon and sometimes I use pre-cooked bacon. Sometimes I cook my bacon. Sometimes I use bacon bits, whatever you wanna do. Um, and then I didn't even put it on the top because I do have some people in my family, it's not me, uh, that don't eat bacon. I don't know what's wrong with them. But anyway, I put that in the oven at 350 for about 15 to 20 minutes uh, because your chicken is already cooked and you're just melting all that stuff together. And that night we just had it with some, um, 
we had mashed potatoes, green beans, a roll, and I also made some Brussels sprouts. They're not on that plate, but I did make some Brussels sprouts, but that is another delicious dinner. Okay, now we've got our shrimp alfredo. This one is so easy and so fast to make, y'all. So you're gonna start with your sauce, your alfredo sauce, and boil in your noodles because the shrimp doesn't take long at all. For your alfredo sauce, you're gonna melt a stick of butter and a tablespoon of garlic. Once that gets all melted together, take it off the heat. And we're gonna add in a cup of heavy whipping cream and a cup of Parmesan cheese and let that bring come back to a simmer. For our shrimp, I actually just got some frozen shrimp from Food Lion and um, if you just pinch that tail on those, I do peel them before I cook them. Uh, you don't have to, but then you don't have to mess with it while you're trying to eat dinner. But if you just pinch that tail, it'll come right off of there, y'all. And the meat will come right out of the whole thing. You don't have to like really fight with them. And then I just put those in a skillet with some garlic and herb butter, but you can put them, you know, if I would have had some Old Bay on hand, I probably would have added that as well. I didn't, um, but just cook that in your skillet. And like I said, shrimp cook so fast that it really just takes like a couple minutes on each side pretty much of the shrimp or stirring it around like maybe four or five minutes to cook your shrimp um, you do want them done you want them pink through but don't overcook them because they'll be rubbery and then um, we just had it with our alfredo pasta and some broccoli that night it was fast and easy but it was also delicious and I don't eat seafood except for shrimp so I enjoyed this one because we don't cook a lot of fish around here Chicken burritos. Um, this I made with some chicken that I already had cooked and frozen in my freezer. I've done a video on that before, how I put stuff up so I can have a quick meal when I need to. This was the night before the hurricane, and I needed to be able to make dinner fast. So I just put my chicken in the skillet. It was already cooked. I'm just heating it back through. Added in a can of Rotel, a can of chicken broth, two cups of minute rice, and eight ounces of the Velveeta cheese. This is just like those... Um, copycat taco bell grilled cheese burritos that we made a few videos back um you just want to bring that back to a simmer let everything cook through and you do want to stir it a couple of times just to keep it from sticking to the bottom then you're ready to assemble your burritos um i did not have any of those uh strips that we used the last time the um the like tortilla strips uh, those are delicious in there and so i highly recommend you add those as well but once you get it all rolled up, you're just going to put some cheese down in your skillet. I've got it on low heat. And then you're going to just lay your burrito on top of there. Let it let that cheese get crispy. And then flip it and let the other side of your burrito get crispy. And we just served it with tortilla chips and salsa. And that way I had dinner done in like 30 minutes. And we were able to go do other things that we needed to do. And I still didn't have to spend the money to go out and pick something up. Okay, this was the day of the storm. This crock pot chicken and dumplings. These are so good, y'all. Um, no, they don't beat homemade, but they are a good close second. So this morning I got up at like six o'clock and started the crock pot. So we would have a nice warm lunch in case we lost power. And I was so glad we did. So you're just gonna, my chicken was actually still frozen. Normally I thought, but I do season my chicken. I just use some nature seasoning. And then I've got like, um, that's like three chicken breasts, but there's six there because they're, you know, sliced in half. And then I do equal parts of cream of chicken and chicken broth. So I did three cans of cream of chicken, three cans of chicken broth. And you can adjust that and your chicken breast and all up and down to how many people you're cooking for. And then I added, um, I always add some like pepper. I don't usually add salt because your chicken broth is so salty already that I usually just add that at the end like you know, to your liking in your bowl. But I do add pepper and also some poultry seasoning. That poultry seasoning though, y'all, that will go a long way. Do not over add that. I seriously, I only put like half a teaspoon in this pot of chicken and dumplings and it was like perfect. So then I put that in the crock pot. I started on low, not thinking at all. And then I was like, no, I need to definitely change this to high because uh, I don't know when we're gonna lose power. So I went ahead and switched that to high. Cooked it on high for about four hours. Then you're gonna chop up your chicken. Um, and then your biscuits, you're gonna use canned biscuits. That's all you need is some cheap canned biscuits. I've got four there, but I only ended up using three of them. And then I just cut them into small pieces and add them all into your crock pot. Then you're going to cook those for like another hour in the crock pot and I stir it every 15 minutes. So um, this day I was home, like I said, it was a storm, but if I do this when I am on a work day or something, I just have to cook that last hour. I'm just, 
um, stirring it every 15 minutes or so. You're not really actually doing any work. And then it's ready to serve. These are so, so good and so, so easy. And the power went out just as it finished. And I was so thankful that we were able to still have a hot meal. Um, you could probably tell I don't have power here, but my phone light is on trying to show you the bowl of chicken and dumplings. But yeah, that fed all of us. Even my kids came down and got a bowl and it was delicious. And then our last meal of the week was French onion pork chops. Um, I just got a pork loin out of the freezer, let it thaw and cut it into pork chops myself. A lot of times you can get them on sale a lot cheaper and just cut your own pork chops to whatever thickness you like. Uh, but you could also just buy you some pork chops. This one I kept seeing online and I was like, okay, well, we're going to try this. But I, all of us said that it was not bad. But none of us were like, oh, yeah, we want to have this again either. So I, I don't think that this was a winner for our family. Um, but it is so popular right now all over social media. So, uh, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, you might want to try it. So all you do is get your pork chops into a casserole dish and cover it with whatever French onion dip you like. And then the recipe just said cheese. It didn't say a type of cheese. So I just used the cheese that I already had open in the fridge and used that up because I'm big on just using what I have here and not letting it go to waste. Then you're also supposed to add the um, French's French fried onions to the top of this. I did have a pack, but when I opened it, they were bad. Um, they were not out of date, but you could tell that there was something wrong with them. So you put that in the oven at 350 for about an hour or until your pork chops are done. And then we had hash brown casserole with it. So I've just got a package of frozen hash browns that I let come, you know, let fall completely. And then to that, I added a can of cream of chicken soup, a can of cream of cheddar soup. Um, a lot of people add cream of mushroom, but like I've said, I'm allergic to mushrooms, so we don't do that around here. About half a cup of sour cream, and then also some shredded cheddar cheese. Um, mix that up good. You're going to add salt and pepper to taste. And then um, once you get, I do a whole block of cheddar cheese, um, or two cups basically, so you're going to put half of it in the in your uh, hash brown casserole, and then the other half we're going to spread over the top of it. Um, and then we're going to put a topping on the top of it. And that's where I need y'all to stay with me because you're going to see me put frosted flakes on this hash brown casserole. Here's what happened. Years ago, I'm talking five or six years ago, we were making the hash brown casserole and I used to top it with um, corn flakes. A lot of people top it with Ritz crackers. That is also delicious. Um, but so I didn't have any corn flakes and my son-in-law really wanted hash brown casserole and he was like, well, we'll just put frosted flakes on it. I said, I don't think that's going to be good. But he was like, no, I think it'll be great. So he convinced me to do it. And then the rest of my family preferred it with the frosted flakes I don't. I think the cornflakes were much better. But the rest of my family is like, oh, well, we have to have Frosted Flakes on it from now on. So, yes, that is Frosted Flakes going on top of my hash brown casserole. Then you're going to melt about half a stick of butter and just pour that over the top. And that's going in the oven at 350 for about 45 minutes as well. There's our, um, this is why, okay, you see all that liquid from the pork chops? I just was not the biggest fan of this. Um, there's our hash brown casserole. And we had it with some green beans, some of the Margaret Holmes um, collard greens, hash brown casserole, there's our pork chop, and some rolls that night. And that was it. And that's it. That's our dinners this week. Um, I have six of them, like I said, and that's because uh, the day after we made the chicken and dumplings, we were not able to cook anything. We didn't have any power. I could have used the generator to um, try to cook something again in like a crock pot or something, but... Um, we just didn't. We just didn't do that. We just ate like sandwiches and stuff. But um, if you like these videos, I hope you'll stick around and subscribe. And I really do appreciate you watching. And also, um, like I've said before, those likes, those comments, they go a long way with YouTube algorithms. So those are super appreciated. And I hope that you all have a wonderful week. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.